Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to take a look at the steps taken to render a fox like the one I've drawn here. We're going to start off with the outlining process and to do this I use the handy grid method with a little bit of freehand here and there. I find that the grid method works best for me to get a fairly accurate outline in the smallest amount of time possible. I could freehand the entire thing but I work to a really tight schedule and the grid method just allows me to stick to it and just helps me develop my outlines really quickly. I use a piece of cartridge paper to make my initial grid sketch. I set my desired paper size, this one being 9 by 12 inches, and then I create 1 inch squares until I have a grid of 9 rows and 12 columns. I also add my reference photo onto a canvas in Photoshop corresponding to the desired size, and then I set up guides in 1 inch increments across the entire canvas. I'm going to make a whole tutorial explaining my process so look out for that on my channel soon. There's also a full live stream of this available over on my Twitch channel if you want to check it out right now. Once I've done the grid I then map out everything I can see within each one inch box until I have the whole thing drawn out and I add in little freehand elements of fur, colour changes, directions, whiskers and all of those kinds of other features. What I do then is transfer this to a tracing paper and then I lay that out on my actual drawing paper and begin the transfer process. It's a little bit of a backwards way of working but this is my method and I I love it and it works really well for me. So we've got the outline, let's start adding some colour to this foxy fella. Throughout this piece I've used Faber-Castell Polychromos colour pencils and all the other equipment I've used can be found in the description box below if you want to check any of that out. I start off with the eyes as they're my favourite and I gently outline with a dark sepia pencil and gradually get firmer with pressure as the shape sort of starts to come together. I then fill in the iris and I start off with lighter colours and adding in darker ones to the shadows of the eye, so mainly around the outside where the eyelids meet the eye. I use a combination of yellow and oranges for the most part and add further shadows with some dark indigo, some dark sepia and I also add in a little bit of green in there as well. To smooth the iris over I go in and use a white pencil lightly to blend and then I add further layers of those mid-tones, so those yellows and oranges once more. And I tend to use the most layers within the eye here as it's essential to build a sort of smooth glassy look and just adding the most layers here really achieves that. The outer eyelids are created by using light layers of dark sepia and also some warm and cool greys and I blend these areas again with the white and also add in some light really finely glazed layers of blue and purple to add some subtle tonality. The fur of the fox actually starts with a cream base layer and this is where I start to depict the fur direction and I just really really lightly shade. I then work over some light shadings of some burnt ochre and also add in a few fur lines to get the start of the texture going. The tones on this fox range from a bright yellow orange to really really dark, almost maroon colours. So I use a combination of different reds and oranges like cadmium orange, I also use some yellow ochre, that kind of thing. And I use the darker reds like a deep red and add a little bit of brown into the shadowed areas, which is mainly around the eye for the time being. My favourite colour to add to this portrait was actually Caput Mortem Violet, as it pairs really nicely with the reds and adds a really subtle depth. For the lighter fur areas, I tried to keep this clean of any of those darker reds and just added some really soft yellow and orange tones, just shaded really lightly, and I kept the fur lines quite far apart to keep the tone really light and fresh. This also helped with replicating the short, sort of close texture of the lighter patches of fur on the nose. For the nose itself, I started off with some light greys and slowly built up to a darker tone by gradually increasing the pressure on the pencils that I was using. I added in some dark indigo and some ultramarine around the white highlights to give the nose a wet, shiny texture. And I also added in tiny touches of manganese violet where the orange fur blends into the top of the nose and that just helped it to blend almost seamlessly. 
The white fur on this is definitely one of the most fun to recreate and it actually consists of a lot of dark grey tones. I started off with a base of warm grey 1 and I built in some cold grey tones, so used a cold grey 3, before developing into some really soft layers of dark sepia and adding in some dark sepia lines and I coupled that with some dark indigo as well. I used all of my pencils really really lightly for this fur as it's so much easier to build lightly and slowly and be able to erase a mistake than it is to go in like really heavy handed and add the correct tone right away. It's really difficult to erase something that you've um, gone in heavy handedly with. So I always make sure that I use really light layers so that I can erase a mistake if I found that I've made one. Building more layers like this also adds to the depth of the fur, it makes it look like really nice and thick and full and dense, which is the kind of texture that I wanted to achieve on the neck here. The blend of the orange into the white is actually created by gently shading down some yellow and also a little bit of green. And I also took the cold grey 3 pencil and layered some fur lines into the orange and into the white to just help that blend. The main part that I want to focus on for this tutorial is the big fluffy ears. This can seem like a really daunting part to draw but the process and techniques involved are actually really really simple. For the outer orange parts of the left hand ear I used the same technique as the face just gently laying down light colours and gradually getting darker where necessary but for the blending of the orange to the dark I applied the same technique as the lower half of the face just used a light grey and cream as a base and then blended through some grey tones gradually getting darker once more. And I used a fair amount of ultramarine and dark indigo in these areas to create a really rich black tone and I think I also put some Caput Morton Violet in there as well. I sprinkled that Caput Morton Violet pencil throughout the entire piece just to sort of really tie the colour scheme together. On the left ear there's some super fluffy white parts coming out of the inner ear and I created those with some light layers of cream and some warm grey one and I added in like minimal dark lines of colour so I barely added any sort of dark colours into this. These parts had a really creamy tone so I used a light, light layer, like a glazing layer of some yellow ochre and I blended it with the white to create that sort of subtle creamy tone. The right hand ear is the trickiest one and I actually started off using a walnut brown to fill in the really dark shapes that I could see within the reference photo before adding down those base layers and filling in some of the texture. Then I just mapped out the shapes, just looked at the reference, mapped out the shapes that I could see and just filled them in with that really dark walnut brown tone. And then I started to add the texture using the walnut brown and blending it from the shapes I just created. So I started to build in some fur lines just to sort of blend those dark shapes out. And then I went back in with the mid-tones, those yellows and oranges, and gradually got darker once more. I really concentrated the fur strokes as I wanted to convey a really thick, dense texture like in the neck on underneath the jaw and I added in multiple lines in the same place to help achieve that. I added in the outer ear first with those light tones and I also added in various colours, the oranges, a little bit of that Caput Morton Violet here and there and I used really tiny dot-like lines to convey the really short texture of that area. And as I was coming down the right hand side of the ear, I gradually moved from the orange reds, that kind of warm tones, and I built in the blues and the dark greys. So using that same technique of blending the orange through to the white on the face. For the inner ear, I used a really sharp white pencil to begin with to add in the really small highlighted white tufts that I could see sitting over all of this really dark area. And I used a hard pressure to sort of indent the paper. And you could also use like an embossing tool to do this, but I decided to use a white pencil as I wanted to limit the tools that I was actually using for this piece. I then went over with my base layer of the warm grey 1 and I added in a little bit of the cold grey 3 to start the shading off and I concentrated that mainly in the really dark sections first and slowly shaded into the lighter tones to help to blend it out. So you just adding in those really dark areas, blending them out and then just concentrating some more dark tones in those dark areas first. 
I also added in some dark indigo and dark sepia tones to really darken the inner section and then started to make lines coming back into the left and right hand side to sort of segment little sections of fur. So I used some lines coming off to the left to segment those really white fluffy tufts that I added in with the hard pressure of the white pencil and I also added in some lines coming into the right hand side so the outer edge of the ear so that you could get that sort of white edge sitting against that dark area but it still looked like fur and not just one block colour and another block colour. To add depth to the darker area I added in some layers of Caput Morton Violet, I also added in orange and green tones, I just wanted to try and replicate the tones that were appearing throughout the piece so that I could get a really cohesive looking piece and really keep that colour scheme alive throughout the whole thing. I added in a few white lines with hard pressure on top of the dark inner ear just to sort of help with that really soft fluffy white texture. I then turned my attention back to all of the orange toned fur and creating the soft texture along the back of the fox just using the same techniques as I did previously throughout the face. There are a few light flecks along the side of the face and to create those I kept the dark fur lines and layers to a minimum and I made sure the lines I created were spaced quite far apart and really quite blunt to the tip. Usually when I create fur lines they're quite tapered and they sort of flick off at the end but for these sort of more speckledy white almost salt and peppery type fur I just kept the fur lines quite blunt. For the light fluffy back I shaded down my base tones and kept my pressure light as I layered in some yellow and orange. The tones here are very subtle and require almost no pressure. Putting too much pressure through the pencil would result in way too much pigment going down and would have ruined the really light texture I wanted to achieve. I coupled the yellow tones with some green for some slight shadowed areas and this was an awesome mix of colours and it created a really beautiful effect. The back was sort of free of any of those harsh shadows like what was going on with the face and the neck so using a dark sepia really wouldn't have been the right choice here but using that dark green was absolutely perfect and just created some really subtle shadows. The final part of this was the really dark neck which was actually white but as there was such a harsh shadow cast the tones I used were really dark and I added in a lot of dark sepia and Payne's grey to this area. Before I completed this portrait I used my black and white reference image to make sure I had the contrast correct before adding in any final details like the whiskers and that's pretty much it. Before we end off this video, the full tutorial of this handsome guy is available over on Patreon and also to my website subscribers. There's also a sneaky free tiger tutorial lurking in the description if you want to check that out as well. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss any of the videos I upload each week dedicated to learning coloured pencil and let me know in the comments below which part of this tutorial you like the most and what you would like to see more of in the future. If you like this video make sure you give it a big thumbs up with that button below and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!